You should be terrified of deepfakes. The idea that someone can take your face, your likeness, and your voice to do things you don't want to do is, well, terrifying. It seems like a harmless idea to the average person, right? You know, put your face on Samuel Jackson's in Pulp Fiction, put your friend's face on a line of chorus dancers and other stupid shit. But let me be serious with you for a minute. What if someone stole your phone and can just unlock it with a picture that they found off Facebook? What if they had your face and voice put on a video you never made? What if a war is waged over something a politician never said? These are some of the things that deepfakes can and have achieved, and they're only going to get more advanced as technology develops. So, per capitalist standards, there are companies rushing to develop defaking and there are companies who are understandably doing the opposite. One of these companies is Intel. Yeah, that one. We talked about in the last video of how they were one of the main proponents of developing the USB, but now they're on the other side of the coin, trying to dismantle what others are developing. And honestly, it's a smart business move. The term AI has had a negative vibe to it since Will Smith 1v1 an angry maid droid, so Intel has been preying on this fear by developing an anti-defake tool. Doing this is playing marketing chess, thinking five steps ahead both from a business standpoint and a PR standpoint, so I'll give them a small round of applause, but then I'll immediately revoke my applause because they suck ass with the CPUs that they make right now compared to AMD's side of things, but I digress. So I hear you your little head asking, what are they doing? Well, they produced the first deepfake catcher. Wait, that's not right. Oh, oh, oh shit. They made the first real time deepfake detector. That's kind of fucking cool. Intel worked with this guy named Yumer Siftsy, which I am so sorry if I'm butchering, but he is a professor from Binghamton University in New York, and he also has a sick beard. But he and some other professors from the same university worked with Intel on this project through development with the sole intention to detect these kinds of deepfake videos. From what I've found, they never really planned to make profit off of this, and presumably weren't even going to release it as a product for sale until Intel got their grubby little hands on it and is going to package it up. But they started this project off with something we call in the nerd world a data set, which is literally a set of data. Wow. In this case, that data set being a collection of deepfake videos they both made and found what they say in the wild, which is basically meaning on the internet. After they got that data set made and compiled, they started looking at what a deepfake can replicate. If the eyes can track what the reflection in the eyes see, what heartbeat and blood flow can be seen in the face. Seriously, this is shit that they had to account for in the development of this. They also looked at how effectively and consistently these effects can be replicated with all kinds of different angles of a face in comparison to where the camera is. Spare you all of the nerd development mumbo jumbo, I'm just gonna tell you they succeeded. Yippee! They achieved around 90 to 96% success rate, contrary to what Intel says of the solid 94, which was from a hand-picked and plucked study, which they like to tout as their consistent results. Here's where things start to get kind of weird though. For a company that's so profit-oriented, there is little to nothing on if this product's gonna be released, how much, and when. There's little to no data on how it was really developed, and this video took a long time to research, but BBC supposedly got their hands on it, and they said it was patchy in reliability. Also, another huge, huge red flag is that there are no studies, or experiments even, on any darker complexions. So anything darker than a white person is not even tested. We have no idea. People have been questioning this over and over again, with no reply from Intel, and they're definitely seeing it. Any comment praising this revolution, I say lightly, is promptly replied to. And if there's a critical comment literally left within the same hour, there is no reply whatsoever. Despite all of this though, they're advertising this. They're advertising it on TV, on YouTube, on social media banners, and there's no product integrated with it. There's no standalone product to purchase, and it's being 
push to people's advertisements. So good job, Intel. <laughs> if you lived on this earth for more than five years, you know that technology moves stupidly fast. And now, naturally, people are also questioning Intel's approach to be a losing battle. They'll just fake blood flow. This won't work long. <laughs> Dude, literally just posting a picture of a bullshit tin can. But you get the idea. One comment, though, that really stood out to me was, this is a goddamn arms race. Just let that sit for a second. I don't know about you guys, but this one hit me. Equating a technology that's rapidly developing in front of us, none of us knowing where it will go, what it will develop into, being compared as a arms race, like the Cold War, that almost brought the world to a nuclear wasteland is chilling. This video obviously isn't as upbeat and lighthearted as my other ones, so where does that lead us now? What about the future? What about XYZ, you know? According to the demographic we saw earlier, it seems Intel is testing this against their processors to see the real-time strain that this would cause if it was running. So we might be seeing it rolled out to us soon, but who knows? Additionally though, and something that immediately occurred to me is that this technology is reactionary. And the best way I can explain that is the law enforcement's 21 foot rule. Stick with me, I promise this applies. Let's say Intel is the cop, and the guy with the knife, or knife man as I'll refer to him, is developing deepfake technology. The space between them is the amount of time a deepfake technology being developed can be used in a malicious way. The guy with the knife can run at the cop anytime he wants. And the cop, or Intel, only has this much time before knife man becomes a threat to itself or other people. The cop can't preemptively strike back at the threat. The knife man, for lack of a better term, has him by the balls. Do you see the issue? Intel or any other company trying to develop anti-defake measures can't block out something they don't know where it will come from. And additionally, this is an AI technology, which means it could have an abstract development that isn't even seen by humans because it might be partially developed with AI to make an AI-based product. Let's say they could. Let's say anti-defake measures are good enough to be a viable business tactic a viable product. This is where that arms race thing comes in. If a company dumps its funds into a deepfake development product, another company will likely dump funds into fighting back on it. These two companies will go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until one side is either out of money or the desire to proceed. Seriously, that, that's how this will end. That's how the Cold War ended because the Soviet Union literally collapsed. So if it ever does end, that's how. So Intel won this battle, but did they win the war? No one really knows. We're free to speculate, but we're not gonna know for another year, decade, or even a century. My opinion is that deepfakes are gonna be as convincing as the real thing very, very shortly. It's gonna be as uncredible as photos are now. Easily manipulated, easily changed, easily altered, or <laughs> even generated, because that's the thing. But the question is, is Intel fighting a losing battle? If not Intel, what about other competing anti-deepfake companies? Are they fighting a losing battle as well? Make sure to let everyone know what your thoughts are in the comments below, and most importantly, go outside, touch grass, and stay hungry.